Hey, what's up? So I'm Michael, Michael Hall's Design. Today I'm gonna show you how to call Pantones and set your artwork up so that you have a print ready file to send to the printer. So I'm gonna break this into two sections. The first one, I'm just gonna run right through it, show you what to do, no filler. Second section, I'm gonna go back over, explain why I do what I do, and then also give some additional information uh, for some of you that may be new to Pantones or screen printing, and we can just kind of take it from there. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, so what do we got here? We have two identical strawberry mojitos, and what I'm gonna do is show you the A and B, the before and after. So if you wanna make, if you wanna turn your artwork into Pantones in Illustrator, the quickest way to do that is just to select everything, come up here, edit, edit colors, recolor artwork, and then choose this drop down. We're gonna go color books and then Pantone solid coded. Click OK. And then what just happened there is Illustrator chose the closest value, based on the values of your artwork, it chose the closest match to the Pantone equivalent of what you have. So you can see it's a little bit dulled down and some of the colors have slightly changed. Um, that's to be expected. Uh, Pantone does not cover all of the uh, spectrum of RGB or CMYK. So just know that uh, going in. If you don't start with Pantones, your artwork will change slightly. Okay, so aside from that, please just make sure that you outline any strokes or any uh, any fonts because that stuff can get a little funky whenever you send it to the printer and it's not already outlined. So Command Shift O will outline the fonts and then you can come up here to edit. Oh, I'm sorry, object, expand appearance. And then there you go, everything has been expanded and outlined. And all that's doing is just ensuring that when someone else gets your file, nothing is going to change because not everybody has the same fonts that you have. And some people have their Illustrator set up a little differently. That's how you set up your artwork in Illustrator with Pantones called and then also with your artwork outlined and expanded. Let's run over to Photoshop and do the same thing really quick. I have a shape that's created here, a little maroon shape, and if I wanna change this to Pantone, all I have to do is click on the little dialog over here, color libraries, and then make sure you select solid coded. Again, Photoshop's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna find the quickest, or the closest equivalent to the artwork that you've chosen. And then it'll go ahead and apply that. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I wasn't clicked in the shape layer. Okay, so if I do this again, there you go, you can see it just change. And it, it's dulled down quite a bit. Again, to be expected, I know it's kind of a bummer, but it's the world we live in, so you're gonna have to get used to it. Okay, so what about text? Let's go ahead and create something here. Okay, so that's pretty dope, super dope. Um, what I would do here is I would not rasterize this, but I would convert it to a shape. And what you've essentially done there is just giving them, giving anyone who you hand this file off to, uh, the ability to scale your text um, to any size. It, it's essentially vector at this point, so they can go as big as they want with it and not have any any issues with pixelation or blurriness. Um, if you, rat, if you just simply rasterize that layer, you don't get that. Um, make sure that your document's set up at 300 DPI. Um, I'll show you that really quick. I hit Command New to bring up a new document. Uh, you can set in your width and your height here. Just make sure it's set to 300. I typically roll with CMYK. Uh, RGB is, is meant for screen, so CMYK is, is gonna give you a little bit more realistic approach, and then create that document. You're good to go. All, all I would have to do now is just send this to the printer as a PSD file, and let them know the Pantones I called, and you'd be good to roll. All right, so that wraps it up for section one. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into section two here and explain why I do what I do, and then also maybe some pitfalls to avoid. And probably the most important piece of information is this Pantone book right here. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so jumping back into Illustrator. First thing is probably gonna be how to open up your swatches swatch over here. Uh, if you just click, go, go to your swatches, go to color books, and then same thing, solid coded. Uh, and then now you can actually, if you want to, you can change these colors to any Pantone that you so desire. 
Uh, you can also use the color guide over here and it's gonna give you some lights and darks based on the color you chose that are also Pantones, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't like any of those, so I'm just gonna back out of there. Just wanted to show you that that's an option to have. It's also useful if a client gives you a specific color to use, like let's say 185 red, you can go ahead and then just pull that up. And then choose that. So there you go, super easy. Um, solid coated versus solid uncoated versus all the other weird Pantone books that are going on in here. Um, solid coated is just kind of what it sounds like. You're printing inks on a coated substrate. Uh, pretty simple, right? Same thing with uncoated. You're just printing on an uncoated substrate. So uncoateds are typically, typically gonna go for like matte print materials, like matte business cards or flyers, uh, definitely screen printed posters because there's no coating on a poster, right? Um, it's just the paper itself. So you, you would use Pantone uncoated in that situation. Uh, solid coated, you're just, I mean, we use that like 90% of the time when we're printing t-shirts, actually 100% of the time. The only time I don't use it is when we're doing screen, pro, screen printed posters. So solid coated sounds a little weird when you're thinking about a t-shirt because a t-shirt's not coated. It's it's just fabric. So what actually happens is um, we actually print, so like take this shirt right here that, let me see, stand up. I actually just had these printed up. Um, what we actually do is print in what's called an underbase underneath the artwork. So that is an actual coating that we put underneath it, underneath the art, but on top of the t-shirt. So with the ink and the artwork, you're actually printing on a coated substrate of sorts, if that makes sense. And that's why we use solid coated. Um, the biggest thing that I wanna go over though is getting yourself one of these, which is a Pantone book. Um, no matter how perfect you get it on screen, uh, no matter how great it looks, if you do not check it with a Pantone book, you will probably get burned at some point in your life when designing or printing t-shirts. Um, biggest reason for that is simply all of our monitors are calibrated differently, right? Mine looks different, slightly different than yours. And that leads to color shift and expectations are not met. And it can turn into like kind of a hairy situation if you know, you're know you on the hook for that with your customer and they're upset at you because it doesn't look the same as what they expected. I always recommend using a Pantone book. Pick one of these up. They're like, I don't know, maybe 80 bucks, 100 bucks. And I know that sounds expensive and it kind of is, but if you compare that to having to reprint an order of shirts or reprint an order of posters, it's it's really not that much because doing that reprinting is going to cost you a lot more than just buying a book. It alleviates room for error and that's important. So screen printing is not a perfect science. Every screen printer does their process a little bit differently. They want this to turn out perfect just as much as you want it to turn out perfect. So that's all I got for you. That's Pantones in a nutshell. There's, I don't know, hours and hours of uh, different debates and you know which inks to use and which printing processes go along with Pantones that you could get into. But for like the majority of people using Pantones and printing t-shirts, this will suffice. Uh, again, if you have any questions, just talk to your printer, but I'm glad you guys could join me. Had fun kind of sharing some knowledge with you. If you have any other questions, just drop them down below and I'll make sure to answer them. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe, hit the notifications bell if you want more content like this, like straight into your inbox. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. Other than that, have a great rest of the night. See ya.